We've been learning about different kinds of values, numbers, strings, and images, and how to write expressions that operate on those values. In this video, we're going to look at something quite different. We're going to look at how to write constant definitions to give names to values so that we can use those values in different parts of the program. Constant definitions are more than just a convenience. We're going to see later in the course that they help us make programs that are easy for other people to read and easy for other people to change. And that those two properties, readability and changeability, are two of the most important properties a program can have. But for now, we're just going to focus on the mechanism of constant definitions so that you can learn how to write a constant definition to give names to a value that you use in other parts of the program. So let's imagine that we're working on a program in which there's a simple interactive game running in a window. One thing we might want to do is give names to the width and height of the window. And the way we do that is we write open paren define and then some name, which we often put the names of constants in uppercase, like this. And we might say that the window is 400 pixels wide. And maybe the window is 600 high. And that's two named constants. If we run this program just like this, we don't get any values out, because defining a constant doesn't produce a value. But now what I can do is I can write an expression like this. And what happens is when Dr. Racket evaluates this, when it comes to evaluating the name of a defined constant, it's just going to use the constant's value there. So this will become 400. So the evaluation steps here would be times width will become 400. That's the first evaluation step. In the next evaluation step, height will evaluate to 600. And at this point, all the operands to multiply are values. And so of course you get 24,000. So the way to form a constant definition is to have an open parenthesis, the word define, a space, and then a name. And names typically include letters of the alphabet in upper and lower case. They can also include numerical digits. And in the beginning student language, they can include lots of other characters like exclamation mark and question mark and equals and things like that. Some languages are more restrictive about that. But the beginning student language is fairly, fairly generous about that. You can't use parentheses or quotes of any kind, no. The rules for evaluating a constant definition are when Racket encounters the constant definition, it evaluates the expression and uses the resulting value as the value of the named constant going forward. When evaluation encounters a named constant, the name constant simply evaluates to the value that the define associated with it. Let's look at another example. Let me get rid of all this now. Suppose in this same program, in my game program, what we have is the image of a cat going back and forth across the screen. Well, I might want to give a name to that image so that I can use it in lots of places. So there's the cat. And what I'm going to do here is go to the second edition of the How to Design Programs book, which we use as the basis for the material in this course. And they happen to have a little cat here that we're going to use. So I'm just going to go copy this image. And I'll come back over here and I'll just paste it right in here. And what's happening in Racket is remember that it, images are values and all values are expressions. So I can stick that image right there in the program as an expression. Most languages won't let you do this, but it's quite convenient to be able to do it in, in BSL, so we're going to take advantage of that. So now I've got a cat, and I can write some expressions using that. So here, rotate is a function. This says rotate the cat by 10 degrees to the left. And here's another expression that would rotate the cat Rotate the cat by minus 10 degrees is what that one does. This will rotate the cat by 10 degrees. If we run this now, we see 
first expression produces the cat rotated this way, the second expression produces the cat rotated that way. And we might even want to give names to these, because remember I said that we can have an expression here after the constant name. So now I've given names to those two rotated cats. Oops, I can't use those names. I've got to use different names. You can only define a given constant name one time. That's why it's called a constant name. It can't change. So I'll call those the R cat and the L cat. And there they are. So here you see that what Racket is letting us do is say define and a name and then an expression. That expression gets evaluated and forevermore that value will be associated with the constant name. So we can use it in other places in the program. I have an exercise I'd like to ask you to do now. This will help you test your understanding of the material in this video. So now you've seen how we can define constants in the beginning student language. As I said at the beginning of this video, we're going to see more and more how important this is. Really this notion of defining name constants is going to have a big effect on making our programs comprehensible to other programmers and easy to change in the future. Let me take a minute now to talk about the pace of the course. If these videos have been going too slowly for you, if maybe you've already programmed, then I just need to ask you to be patient. I promise you we're going to get there. If on the other hand maybe you haven't programmed before, some of you might find these videos going a bit too quickly. One thing we've learned at UBC is that for some students it takes a little bit longer to get the hang of this. If that's the case for you, if you feel like it's going a bit too quickly, let me make three suggestions. First, go back through the exercises that you had a hard time with and work them again. Second, you can watch that part of the video again. But most importantly, let me suggest you go to the week one page, look at the instructions for how to get help, and post a message asking for help. One of the things we've learned in the thousands of students that we've taught this material to is it really helps a lot to ask other people and discuss the issues that you're having a hard time with. That's going to be a big part of this course going forward. 